I just thought you might like to meet our friend. We've been watching her grow from just a little one, and she loves clover. She doesn't seem to mind our presence, which of course we get a big kick out of. And everything is nice and moist because we just had a rain. We've been getting a bit too much rain and some of our crops are having difficulty with that. But can't have it both ways. So let's do a quick walk. Uh, I don't know how much Bunny will tolerate me. But hey Bun, can we walk past you? How about if I go this way, so you see me, okay? Hmm? I'm just going to go past you, all right? Okay? Just a little. Go ahead. I'm just going to go past you, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Okay, Chris. We've been working on redoing these beds. You know. After a couple of years, the stones get lazy, so we have to take it all down and redo it. That one's next. A bunch of rocks. Yeah. Dogwoods. Bunny doesn't go far. Lingam stones, which were gifted to us many years ago. We're just stewarding them for someone. Who knows? Maybe we'll get to, to return them someday, but for now, they're here. And we've got some little pumpkins coming along. I love the pumpkins. Mm, let's see. Which one? And another one. They're not big. I don't care. I love pumpkins. This is einkorn wheat, which is a very old variety that has really never been hybridized. And it's going to seed. And that'll be fun. It's just a test plot. We don't have a lot of room to do things like that, but we do it anyway. The raised beds have been a boon, but I will say that the moles and voles have had their way with this yard, and it seems like this year they're even crazier than ever. They're everywhere. I'd like to point out, this is a particular type of mint, a Peruvian mint called huacate, or black mint, and it's used in a sauce, a dipping sauce, a salsa called aji amarillo. So aji is a type of pepper that grows quite tall. It's yellow and somewhat hot. And you mix it with queso and this black mint, and it is divine. That dropped seeds from last year, so that's nice. It's an annual. Now, I never have luck with, am with Amish paste. So this will definitely be the last year we're doing Amish paste. They cannot take the humidity here, at least in my yard. So it's a beautiful tomato, it's a paste, and they're wonderful because they get quite large. So you can, you can use it as a slicer or you can use it for sauce, but they're so unhappy here. These are faring a little bit better We've got one called Rugged Boy, which is supposed to be resistant to the blight, which is the problem. And this one is called Plum Regal, R-E-G-A-L. So that will be my substitute for the Amish paste. And that's coming along. They're pretty nice looking. I love tomatoes. I'm gonna go this way 
because I want to show you. I just planted seeds from parsnip. We have some parsnips that went wild on us. And so when they went to seed, I gathered up the seeds and planted a row. And I also gathered up seeds of leek over here in the next row that were in the garden and went to seed. And guess what? Some of them actually started to sprout on top of the plant where the seed head was. I just found these this morning, so I took that apart and planted those. So we'll see what happens. That's kind of fun. Okay, here's an interesting thing to show you. Rutabaga. I have a problem with slugs and potato bugs eating the new seedlings that I put out. So I have put little cat food cans of uh, beer and the little bugs go in overnight and they don't trouble the seedlings. So far we're in here three days and I still have a crop, so that's a big deal. We'll see how it does. We'll see how it does. This is a volunteer squash. I love them. Look how healthy. Even if it's just to look at and not eat. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. So it started over here. Wend its way through the tomato plant. Went around the gladiolus. <laughs> came out the other side and then I decided I would weave it through this, this fencing that's around the planting bag that has potatoes in it. So, why not? My neighbor Fred gave me this bitter lemon. This is doing nicely and we did the same thing. This is wound around the planting bag that has potatoes in it. So, Everybody can just be happy together. Here's our magenta lamb's quarters. You can't beat that. Look how beautiful. Great substitute for spinach. Yeah. Here's the sad part of the story. Hmm. What happened? This was such a healthy plant. I think we had too much rain. And of course, not enough sun. Dahlias are doing okay. They've been here for years. They come back every year quite well. Um, you know, big disappointment. These guys just really want it to be hot and dry. And I can't give them that. But this bed next door is doing all right. I'm sure we had a woodchuck come along and eat most of the broccoli plants down. But they mercifully left the tips, so I think they're okay. But this is doing well. We've got a nice, healthy-looking pepper in here. Look at that. That's just starting to turn red. So maybe when those three peppers are harvested, this one will start to put out more flowers. I think it's busy trying to ripen. So, everything's looking good. So, don't you, don't you look healthy, but again, too much rain. So they're having trouble getting the flowers going. I'm just gonna take a quick walk through the greenhouse. We cleaned it up about two, three weeks ago, maybe two, maybe two weeks ago. We're on July 24th or 5th today. So finally I got an early start on this. I cleaned it up, yanked everything out, watered the soil, let all those seeds fall down, and look. Look at this. This is all kale, and I will have to thin it. It's doing really well. And then on this side, there's lots of arugula. This will be beautiful. This will be two feet high all winter long. And I have not put new seeds in here in 10 years. 
We go through this process every year. We let everything go to seed. Let it get dry. When we pull it out, we shake the seeds on the ground and water it. And that's that. Starting some more. The celery is from here, right here. Celery seeds. Here's a celery plant. I let it go to seed. Looks just like parsley, I know. But it isn't. It's celery. So, those seeds are ripening. And I put some in here. And I just put some lemon basil in. And some broccoli. And that's Florence fennel coming up. And some nice sage. Go to cola right here. Nice mint. This is Hinomaki yellow. It's a what do you call it? Um, you know, it's a fruit. It's a shrub fruit that seemed to want to root itself when it hit the ground. Gooseberry. That's what I'm trying to think of. And this is a beautiful datura, grew from seed. Yeah, looking pretty good. This feels very good. In one month's time, these will be much higher. We'll come back and visit. But what I really want to show you, oh, here's one other thing, wait. This is passion vine, and I thought I had lost it. I had it in the greenhouse, and it disappeared because of the voles. But then it showed up in the lawn, so I've been training it up and up and up so it can grab onto the apple tree. And we'll make tinctures of that. Even if I don't get blossoms, I can still use the leaves for tincture. There's our fig tree coming back. Vol's got a hold of that too. Okay, this is wonderful comfrey. We'll add that to our compost pile. It's the best thing for compost. Everybody's doing well here. Lettuce finishing up. These guys were volunteers. We'll get nice little fruit on them. Look at that. How sweet is that? Here's the dill. Going to seed. I love dill. Some more squash. Look at the ashwagandha. You never know. Some years we can't grow it at all. This year, it's going like gangbusters. It's great. We'll tincture that. Phlox loves to reseed itself. If you let it, it'll take over and make a phlox forest for you. Here's what I'm excited about. I have a nostalgic thing for four o'clock. And I haven't had them in years. But look. This is just opening for the first time today. Grew it from seed. I couldn't be happier. What a great flower. Yeah. We planted pole beans in with the tomatoes. <laughs> They're doing really well. They're just now starting to make blossoms. Find some. Don't know where they went. But we've got some nice tomatoes in the middle. Eggplant is not happy with all the rain. Very spindly. But here we go. Here are some nice blossoms on the beans. Once they start. I believe they're the most generous plant in the garden. And then we'll can them with our pressure canner. And I'm sad to say, there are some more peppers looking very unhappy. Hmm, not enough sun. Although, yesterday Steve did mix up some biodynamic sprays to bring in more light, so we'll see if that helps. All right, friends, thank you for joining me. 
Let me go ahead, Bonnie was here and we got to meet her. Oh, one more thing. Wait. I bought this variety of corn. It's a very short variety that only grows about, well, you can see it's like three, four feet high at the most. So we did beans and squash and corn together, the three sisters. I'm psyched. Looking forward to that. Now, we do have a problem with raccoons, but what I will do, and this worked very well for me in the past, rather than putting a fence around it, I lay down on the ground around the planting bed, chicken wire. I just lay it flat on the ground. They don't like their little feet to get tangled up in chicken wire, so they do not bother the corn. How about that? Okay, that's it. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now.